Oh, what a season, Jamie, and I've got to say, I do love a trip to the Highlands. Hey, it's beautiful up here. Great people, great hospitality, and the football's not been bad either. Eh? Jamie, Rory, hey, you're Craig. never going to believe it. I've just had a mad dream. Mental, right? The season went to the last day, okay? Kilmarnock were in 11th place, the playoff place. County were 10th, they were safe. Okay, go on, right? what happens? Kilmarnock away to Hamilton. Sounds County great. away to Mother My old club, both in the Amazing that. All right, any goals? Well, Kilmarnock were leading 2-0 at Hamilton, which meant County then slipped into the bottom two because they were losing at Mother Mill. They're saying we're going to know. Oh, no. But, but, this is, twist. this is when you it was a dream. Ian Bagger scored from the edge of the box, the level for County. Then Mick, Michael Gordon outpaced the Scotland right back, Stephen O'Donnell to get the winner. Is <laughs> if that would ever happen. That's incredible, but it's for you. And now we get ready for a new season in Dingwall. Eaton goes down, penalty kick. No doubt about it. Stewart sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. And it's Ross Stewart who opens his and Ross County's account for the season. He finds the back of the net again, but County have surrendered their 100% start to the season. Five goals for Celtic without response from Ross County. That is that. Three seismic points secured by the Staggies. Oh, here's trouble for County again. Tavernier across the face. And it's an own goal. The dark clouds continue to gather over Dingwall for County. The Canadian classic from the Ross County midfielder, and the drive is over. The sweetest of moments for Ollie Shaw, who surely puts this game to bed. Ross County are heading for a monumental victory. Listed ball there, and that will be a penalty. Hilton gets the break of the ball, and Hilton slots into the empty nets. And Aberdeen feel the knockout blow of the Staggies. The so visitors, for the third time this season, have taken points off Ross County. Seventeen years old. And a seismic goal for Leo Gelda! Disappointment for Ross County, who led early in the second half. County in the ascendancy and they've got the second equaliser. This is turning in to a relegation don't fight classic. It's knocked across the face, was it over the line from Yakimiti? The goal is given! They've been powerful, they've been predatory. They've been absolutely ruthless. The Staggies are heading out of the drop zone into 10th place in the Scottish Premiership. Well, welcome along to RCFC TV for our review of the 2020-21 season here at the Global Energy Stadium. And what a season it has been. We can relax now. Safety in the Scottish Premiership is assured. And as he has been for every game this season, Stephen Cragen is in the hot seat for us for this review. Stephen, just sum up what this season has been like to cover and the achievement of staying in the, the top flight. Well, first of all, it's been a roller coaster season with regards to emotions. I think the overriding emotion from the weekend is the club are going to be a Scottish Premiership side next season. Ultimately, as the season progressed, that was the aim. Um, I think there's, you know, there's been so many highs, so many lows. I think inconsistency in team performance has played a big part. But I think what they showed at the end was a real togetherness, a real spirit when it counted to get the team over the line, to get safety. And it's now all about progressing and trying to build for next season. Let's take a look back, if you can remember, all the way hmm. back to the start of the season. And it was an incredible start for the club. We were 
We were thinking about the, the road to Europe at that stage. It was, you know, beating Motherwell here, first game of the season, considering they had finished third the previous season and got themselves into European football. Uh, keeping a clean sheet, Ross Stewart getting the penalty. Then going to Hamilton and backing that up with another three points. And you suddenly start to think, this could be a special season. But we always know in football that uh, it, it sends you little reminders now and again. I think Kamarnik here in the third game of the season, they played quite well, probably could have won the game. Lost against Dundee United when probably they shouldn't have lost. And I think then that triggered off a chain of results where they had played well, created chances, couldn't take them, but gave up soft goals. And if you'd have said to someone after watching the victory down at Hamilton on the 8th of August, that between the 8th of August and the 29th of December, you'd win one out of 18 league games, I don't think anybody would have believed you. But that's how dramatic the fall off in performance was. It was a difficult spell for the club. What games stuck out in that period from September through October, November and into December for you? Well, there's so many games that were similar. You know, going to Ibrox, playing against Rangers who eventually would become champions, losing at that stage by a single goal to nil, Ross Stewart having a really good chance to make it 1-1, Cole Donaldson then having a, a guilt edge chance with a header from seven or eight yards, and then within a matter of minutes, 2-0 behind and you lose the game. Uh, Kilmarnock away from home, I think it's another one when Kilmarnock had Stuart Finlay sent off after eight minutes. So you play against 10 men for 82 minutes and you lose the game 3-1. Another huge opportunity gone. Aberdeen, I mean, Ross Stewart seems to be the fall guy in all this, but losing by a single goal to nil, he's got the great chance. Within seconds, he doesn't score. Curtis Mayne makes it 2-0. And then suddenly the game is away from them. So there's so many things like that, Rory. We, you know, you look at it and you think, if they'd taken their chances and if they'd defended better, they could have had more points. But once they get into that rut, they found it really difficult to get out of it. And it was the same things that kept reoccurring, reoccurring. And you could see the confidence going down and the belief in the squad starting to disappear. Within that, though, there was an incredible result. A win at Celtic Park, which perhaps showed exactly the character and the potential that was within the squad. Absolutely. There's been so many times this season they've, they've, they've pulled out performances that were unexpected. And I think that Celtic one was hugely unexpected because they were so comfortable in the game. You know, yes, they're under a little bit of pressure, but, you know, they took ownership of the game. They took their chances when they came along. They were high energy. They were well organised. They were well structured. And that was the day that I thought the bad run was going to turn. I thought, this is it. This is the real turning point where they can kick on. They can build some momentum. They can get themselves out of it. But they didn't. And that was a standalone game that was a one-off and they couldn't back it up. And there were so many times after that they had good performances, but they couldn't back it up. Well, thanks for now, Stephen, and plenty more to come from you. As part of this review programme, we'll be doing our end of season awards. And one man that has picked up multi-awards is now with Jamie Lyle. Yes, Rory, I am indeed joined by Ross County's Young Player of the Season, Players' Young Player of the Season and Goal of the Season award winner, Charlie Lackin. Charlie, three awards this term, where did it all go wrong? <laughs> um, no, it's been a very successful loan spell for myself. Um, couldn't have done it without the players, the staff, the coaching staff, everyone behind the scenes. I mean, like I said, I've loved it, yeah. I've loved every opportunity and like I said, it's been a really successful loan spell. Take me back to the, the start of the campaign. I'm sure a player in your position, your age and stage, would have wanted to, to stay at Birmingham, your parent club, and push on and, and become a first-team regular. Was it difficult finding out that that wasn't going to be the case and you are going to be coming up to the Highlands of Scotland so far away from home? Yeah, it was. I mean, like I say, I had a good pre-season uh, at Birmingham. Uh, done really well. Been, got told I'd done really well. Um, like I say, I was in the squad for the first game, played the first game in, on the bench for the second game. And then it all happened so quick that it just come to the right decision mutually that uh, it was best for me to go out alone and get game time, which they agreed, we, I agreed, and I was happy to do so. And then within the space of 48 hours, I was signed here and on the way up here. Um, not a short journey, but <laughs> like I say, it was worth it. And yeah, I've come here and that was the very start of it. Before I knew it, I was in Scotland. Never been to Scotland in my life. And I've come to the furthest possible point away, which <laughs> is... Bit, bit mental and bit crazy, but like I say, it's, I've loved it. It's been really enjoyable. Yeah, how has it been? Is it is it a special place? Has it got to you? Because oh, it's hard moving at the best of times. Yeah, To be away from family in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah, tough. definitely. I mean, it has it has been hard. I mean, like I say, not seeing family. Um, 
not having fans here and stuff like that, it has been hard. But like I say, I've loved it. I've enjoyed every moment of it. I mean, coaching staff, people behind the scenes, players, they've all welcomed me, all made me feel, feel like as if it's home. I've enjoyed every minute of it and I'm just grateful for the opportunity that yeah. I've been given. What do you learn about yourself on loan at a club like this? Um, you learn a lot from outside of football, like I say, I've had to move up here, living on my own. Um, my girlfriend came up, fortunately, so I had a bit of company. Um, but then on the pitch, like I say, it's, I've definitely learned a lot from experienced lads here, um, had good careers themselves, experienced staff members, coaches. Um, like I say, they've also had good careers, so I've learned a lot on the pitch. And like I say, that's all benefited for me going forward. Well, Charlie, many, many congratulations. It's been a great loan spell for you, a great season here. Three awards. We can't actually fit them all on the table, <laughs> but here is your Young Player of the Season award. Cheers. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Back Cheers. down the road at Birmingham. Well, thank you very much to Jamie for that. Just the three awards for Charlie Lacken. Almost a clean sweep. How would you rate the season that Charlie's had here on loan, of course, from Birmingham City? Well, judging by the awards, it's been a successful one for him. I think he'll be slightly disappointed that he hasn't played a bigger part in the running and the bigger games came around. Of course, he had the wonderful finish against Hamilton, which, you know, gave the team real belief to go to Motherwell and win in the last day of the season. I think the hard thing for him was, is what's his best position? You know, he's played left midfield and left him for three. He's played wide left. He's played left back, which I actually think he done quite well at. You know, defensively was very good. He's tidy in possession. Um, so I think he will view it as a successful period for him. He will now go back to Birmingham City and try and push on and move into their first team. But I think he will have enjoyed his time here. I think he has enjoyed his time. And the fact that his own players have voted him Player of the Year tells you what they think about him. That goal against Hamilton was a big one though, wasn't it? It was. And I'd said during the commentary at the time that because he's a forward-thinking player, when he got on the ball, he didn't think of anything else apart from moving the ball and trying to get a shot off. If you get a left back who's maybe more defensive minded, they would have tried to cross it or tried to play the pass somewhere else. He had one thought in his mind and that was to get a strike off and it was a terrific goal. I think we've seen this season, it's really important to get your loan signings right. There's been a, yeah. a few good ones. It's also a good place for young players to come and play. Well, if you're Rangers and Celtic, for example, when they sent up Stephen Kelly and the aim was to try and take him from the championship last season when he played at Air United to try and progress him into the top league. And I think it's consistency. It took him a while to find it. But what they will have liked is in the high pressure games at the end of the season, John Hughes put him in. So he had to deal with that, he had to adapt his game. You talk about winning second balls and picking up scraps, he's had to learn all that. It's not a passive game playing in the first team in the Scottish Premiership. So I think Rangers will think that's been good for him. But also, you know, young Leo Hjeld, 17 years of age, playing at left back, first time experience in men's football. I think he's progressed really well. So those two clubs in particular, if they're looking to put players out, you're right, this is a very good place to come. Well, throughout the second half of the season, we have always loved hearing from John Hughes and I was fortunate enough to catch up with the manager earlier. John, what are you doing there? The band's over. You're allowed in the dugout these days. Oh, the band's over, eh? The compliance officer isn't watching anymore. <laughs> Here by the powers of telly. Uh, I'm here, I'm now here. Too bad. So John, it's eventually come to an end the season. Has it set in the achievement that you've managed up here? No, not really, to tell you the truth. Um, I think uh, we'll have to let the dust settle and reflect on it, but a great achievement and it's all down to the players. I have to say that, you know, we can only guide them. Uh, there's been highs, there's been lows. Uh, but even in the lows, has to, you have to come back and want a wee bit more of it. Uh, and that's what they've done, you know, some disappointments. And my only frustration is the consistency of performance throughout the season. When we're good, we'll get any team a game. And when we're poor, which is, it's not been too much this year. Probably our worst performance was St Johnston away from home and Rangers. Uh, but it's getting that consistency performance to make sure that you're, you're winning games. What's your overriding emotion right now? Um, I'm really proud of them, uh, every one of them. Uh, you know, I see Charlie Larkin standing there, a guy that's come up on loan 
the lone players have been absolutely fantastic. Picked and up a few awards as well. Yeah, them. and throughout the season as well, I have to say this, there's been a low objective achieved. There's been a lot of uh, times, you know, in the window was a very, very difficult time coming in. Coming into the winter, training in the indoor hall, you no know, getting on that training pitch, you know, where you can do 11 v 11, which I feel as a coach is essential. Big Ross Stewart leaving, you know, our talisman leaving to go to Sunderland. You're saying to yourself, we're right up against it here, we could do with him. That's football. Josh leaving. And then the injuries to one or two, especially Callum Morrison, who was our leader at the back. Um, and we had to just keep going and roll on with it. And so all the credit goes to the players and the staff and everyone connected to Ross County. I'm absolutely delighted. Uh, I have to say that... I would like to think if I'm here next year and move, keep moving forward, I don't want it to be fighting relegation every year. You know, we'd look to console, consolidate our plays better in the SPL and look to try and get in that top six. So when you ask players to come here, you know that they need to be all in on coming to the Highlands. But it's also something that you know you have to do and you've thrown yourself into this job as you did when you were previously in Renes? It has to be, you're, you've said it, it's all in uh, but it's a, you, it can be a unique place because you're up here, it's 100% football and there's not a better place to be in, in, in uh, the Highlands in Dingwall or in Verness and just football, the facilities are here so if you're bringing the right type of player they'll see this as they'll embrace this and see what a challenge this is and if they're really focused on their football um, then, you know, that's a massive, massive help because if they want to improve every day as a footballer, then they're getting football 24-7. And that's the way I see it. That's the way I see it at Inverness and that's what I want to try and bring here at Ross County. You know, I want everybody basically saying to me in the afternoon I'll be back out training because they want to be better individually and collectively. And if you're doing that, then the club can only benefit. Was Were there any moments in the five months that you've been here that you thought, that maybe you weren't going to save them? If I no, Rory. No, no. I'm a, you asked the question, I was thinking of someone else here because usually, and I do, I, you, I'm a politician, you ask the questions and I ramble and <laughs> go on. Uh, but what, what, what I was uh, really going to say, no. But I've always found when I come in here, I had to come in with slippers on because I knew they were fragile and lacking confidence and I've had that experience so I had to come in and galvanise it and get together and sometimes as a manager you have to overstep the mark and be the clown you know, have a laugh but also I think, I think that they've got that respect and they're still a little bit oh I'm still that little bit fear and that has to be there as well so it's using all your tools as a, as a coach, as a manager to get the best out of the players and that's what most important, what I have to give the players to get them at their best. Maybe next year it might change, you know, and maybe be a bit, little bit more stricter where it's, where it's mine and the demands can be a little bit more uh, harder on them. And uh, I don't know, Rory, I don't know. Usually if, if I do all these courses and I work for the SFA and I get asked all these questions, what makes a good manager? And I just feel be yourself and you've got instinct. That's what, that's what I roll by, and uh, it's worked for me. Just finally, first game of next season, full Global Energy Stadium and you sitting in the seat there. Well, I might not be sitting in there, really, because before we come on, you know, I, I think you see a different game when you're up in the stand, and I'm, I'm old enough now to realise that that's important sitting up there, uh, just to see it for a higher view, uh, viewpoint. Because as a coach, you've done all your work, you know, you have to let the players go and, go and play and trust them to go and play. And that's what's been a big thing, the trust and what you've got for what I've been seeing on the training pitch and picking the team, the trust that I'm seeing. And go and get on with it, boys, I trust you. And, uh, and we found a shape. But to, be, to answer your question, that would be absolutely fantastic. And it's, it was imperative that we'd done it in the SPL. I really felt for the chairman. You know, we've got a good relationship, good dialogue. And I could sense this week that he was feeling the nerves a little bit because it's his club and what he's put in for it. So, you know, to stay in the SPL, he'll be a relieved man. And I'm just delighted that I played a small part in helping him do that. But I'll re-emphasise again, it's the players. It's the players. Yep, we've had 
lows along the way, but the main objective was staying in the SPL and we've done that and all the players have to take the credit for that. Well, John, congratulations to yourself as well and thanks for your time. Cheers, Rory. Thanks very much. Well, great stuff, as always, from John. And of course, at the club, that was a huge decision to make in December to make the change in management. Well, I think in Stuart's last game against Hamilton here when they lost by two goals to nil, I think the general feeling was throughout the week that if he didn't win the game, I think Stuart knew himself that he was going to have to move on from the club. And it's always difficult as players and staff, and even for us working here at RCFC TV, when, when a good guy loses his job. Because he was really good to us. I've known Stuart for a number of years. I used to manage against him in the under-20 league. We always had a, a healthy respect towards each other. And my, my feelings towards him grew because I got to know him a little bit better here. And you speak to the players after he left and there's a real warmth towards him. But sometimes in football it doesn't work for one reason or another. You can't actually put your finger on it. And I know whenever Roy McGregor made the you know, decision to change, it hurt him a bit because he was very close to Stuart. And I think Stuart leaving left, um, left everyone kind of a little bit lost for a while. But as football happens, Roy, you have to make a decision to change the manager. Uh, Roy McGregor did and we had to move on. Well, and you had to get that pick up. And who better yeah. to pick up a squad than John Hughes? Well, John's always been known as a, a, a jolly character, happy-go-lucky, but he's serious about his football. I think sometimes people overlook that. But he came in, first game away at Celtic, lose, uh, lost by two goals to nil. But I think here against St Mirren in his first home game, two men sent off, playing quite well in the game, lose two late goals. He must have thought to himself, what have I walked into? You know, is this what it's going to be like between now and the end of the season? And then we talk about that out of character performance they had at Celtic in the Cup. They had one at Easter Road in late December. And it was like, it opened my eyes because I didn't see it coming. They were really good against Hibs, really assured, really calm. Harry Payton got a great first goal. Jermaine Hilton does really well for the second and all his shots taps in. And then you start to believe this is the turning point. But as always with Ross County, they give it to you with one hand, I said previously, and they take it off you with the other one. So then it was a bit of a slog, but there were so many highs when John took over. You know, beating Aberdeen here by four goals to one was a terrific result. I think beating Celtic uh, here, winning down at Hamilton, the famous White and Mackay partnership that stuck for a little while, and then beating Kilmarnock here 3-2 ahead of the split. So there were so many good performances, but there's the same characteristics that happened under Stuart. They couldn't back it up. I'm um, alongside the Ross County Players Player of the Season, Mr Ross Laidlaw. Ross, many congratulations on a, a fabulous campaign for yourself. How was it for you? Yeah, I think it's um, the way we've ended the season has been great. Um, three wins in a row. Um, it's been a, a long, hard season for us, um, obviously without the fans there as well. So it's been difficult in, in that respect. But now we're just glad to get over the finish line and avoid uh, the relegation spot and the playoffs as well. The dynamic between the goalkeepers at this club has been interesting this season. It started off under Stuart Kettlewell where you and Ross Duan were almost in a 50-50 scrap for goalie supremacy. You made that spot your own. How important was, was winning that battle and making yourself a number one at this club? Yeah, I've just tried to work as hard as I can every day in training and when I'm on the pitch on a Saturday I've just tried to perform as best I can. It's up to the manager to pick you. Um, so I was glad I kind of won that battle. Can I get playing week in, week out? And I think I've went for strength to strength and play by playing week in, week out. So it's been it's been good in that respect. Um, I've just enjoyed playing every week and I think that's my performances have been at a higher level because of that. Talk to us about the, the dramatic final day. You're needing to, to at least get a point against Motherwell. Kilmarnock, you may have heard, were, were beating Hamilton Academical. I don't know if the messages were being fed on to you guys on the pitch. What was it like being in that scenario, knowing you had to deliver? Yeah, it's difficult, but we knew we had a job to do. Like I think we kind of knew going into the game that um, it was going to have to be down to us. We couldn't depend on resu results elsewhere, and that proved to be the case. So, obviously, 1-0 down at half-time, we knew we had a big 45 minutes coming up, and um, I think the boys were absolutely brilliant second half, and it's also it's a lot of pressure to go and do that. And um, we performed really well, and we're delighted we end up not just getting a draw, we end up winning the game as well. So I think the last 10-15 minutes was a bit comfier than it 
Because we've got that second goal, yeah. so now I could actually enjoy it for a, yeah. for a change. Sure, it was more comfortable for the fans. It was more comfortable yeah. for us in the commentary box <laughs> yeah. as well, knowing it was almost there. And we have as well, for the Staggis fans, got a little RCFC TV exclusive for you, Ross. You've signed a new contract to stay in Dingwall. Yeah, um, I'm delighted to get it agreed and get it all over the finish line. Um, I've enjoyed my time here. Um, my family moved up with me and I was really enjoyed living in the Highlands as well. So that was part of the decision for staying here longer term and just to enjoy my football playing week in, week out. And it's a great set up here. Like, I, I really do enjoy it. So hopefully more to come. Yeah. It's obviously been a very happy interview so far. I'm sorry to, to lower the tone by bringing up goals conceded stats, yeah. but I think over 60 in the league, shipped mm -hmm. by county, over the course of the season. Is that a big work on for you, for the back four, back three, whoever's playing in those positions next season? I think it was not just personnel, but I think we struggled to find a shape this season that suited us. And then when we did maybe do get a shape that suited us the next week, we'd be putting a poor performance. It's just, I think the last three weeks of the season, we stuck with the same kind of shape and, and it, sent, came, sent, sorry, it worked for us, just that, that shape. And obviously, if we'd found that a bit earlier in the season, it would have been a lot easier. But no, I think um, it just seemed to work for us that shape and hopefully we can take that into next year. Well, Ross, many congratulations. You are the players' player of the season here at Ross County. It's great to see you flourishing in the Highlands and have a great summer. I wish you all the best. Well, congratulations to Ross on winning our player of the season. He certainly was a standout and you just talked about consistency. He was the one man consistent throughout the entire season. You know, I agree with you, but in a strange way that if you don't watch Ross County or you haven't watched a lot of their games and you look at the goals against record of 66 goals, you automatically think, you know, goalkeeper. It couldn't be further from the truth. And I have to say, I'd heard of Ross Laidlaw. I watched him play briefly throughout his career, but having watched him closely, I think he got better as the season went on and it probably typified you know, the team's turnaround in performances as the season went, you had that sticky spell in the middle. But he got better and better. He became more assured. He was very confident. His decisions of when to catch and, and take the pressure off the team or when to punch just to relieve all the pressure. So I think he's a deserving winner. And I think the fact that the players picked him out tells you all you need to know. And it's difficult as a goalkeeper because in a team that was continually changing from a back three to a back four, then you have a managerial change. You have different central defensive partnerships in front of you with Cole Donaldson, uh, Ross Draper's played in there, Alex Jakovitti, Callum Morris, Keith Watson, Jason Naismith, Leo Hjelda's played in there. So for him to focus on his game and get his consistency, but looking ahead and having different formations in front of him, I think speaks volumes for himself. Well, Roy, thank you so much for, for joining us. The dust is still settling from Fir Park on Sunday. Just how are your emotions right now? Um, a bit frayed, probably. You know, it's been, as everyone knows, a challenge. We've had COVID. Uh, we've had no fans that probably all of us have underestimated the power of fans. And I'm so, you know, as a community club, so into the relationship with the fans. And, and we really, really miss that. Uh, and we've had a lot of soul searching about our inconsistency and, and, and why until the last three games, you know, we, we were so up and down. So in 25 years, it's probably been the least enjoyable season, but they woke up this morning uh, feeling a lot better. To get the result in the end must be something special when you go through that roller coaster of emotion. Yeah, and, and probably the manner of it, you know, that again, the last two games, we've gone a goal down. So you question character and you question, you know, you know what they've got in their hearts and souls and what the club means to them as a team rather than as individuals. And I think probably in both games, they answered the question positively. So that's encouraging that that spirit and that belief was there, but it, maybe it was asleep at times and uh, it was awakened in the end. And I'm just delighted, particularly for the management team, for the supporters, that uh, we have another year of Premier Football. And it's something that, you know, I don't take for granted. Uh, and I'm still amazed 
that this is my part of the world, but for a club of this size, particularly with population, to be playing for nine of the last ten years at the top level of Scottish football is still a bit of a dream. So the dream goes on. When you look at some of the clubs that have dropped out of the top flight and how long it's either taken them to come back or how much of a struggle it has become for them, how important is it for a club like Ross County to stay in the top flight? Yeah, I think it's, <clears throat> I think it's really difficult. I think going down to the championship um, is a different mindset. I think there is a gap between uh, the Premier and the mindset. Maybe not such a gap between the bottom and the top of the championship. But, you know, I think Hibs were down for four years. Dundee United were down for four years. Uh, Inverness have not come back. So, you know, to be able to f fall down and to come back up is, is really difficult. And I suppose in the Ross County journey, you know, we've had, you know, 25 years uh, and particularly the first 15 years was a cause. Why is a team for the Highlands not been accepted in Scottish football? So as we came up through the leagues, there was a journey and there was a cause. Um, and, and in 2010, there was a Scottish Cup final that was a bit of a watershed and, and, and it created a belief. Uh, and, but that belief has got to have some um, soul to it. And, you know, to, after 10 years, to, to wh where is the soul? Where is the cause? Uh, the, you cannot be guaranteed any. You, you, you are a Premier League club. Well, well, well who are you? And, and, I, and I think probably as we go forward now, we've probably come to a, a junction in the road that we need to go and examine who we are, you know, um, to understand does the values that we had 25 years ago still apply today. Uh, we've created a wonderful infrastructure for the next 25 years. Uh, we have given opportunity. Uh, we have given belief. Uh, we are the club for the Highlands. Uh, and, and, and we're still competing, you know, with the city clubs. Uh, and, you know, that is, in financial terms, a real challenge. Um, but we're proud people as well, and, 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 the, and the football here, from both teams up here, have created a sense of belief that uh, we are part of Scotland. And football, you know, in this part of the world is part of Scotland. Um, and, you know, I'm sort of semi-disappointed that Barona didn't go the full journey as well, but I'm sure they'll come back, and, and hopefully they'll, there'll be another club from this part of the world that can compete in Scotland. When you get to the end of the season and you survive by the finest of margins, you probably look back to every point that was accumulated. And in December, you had to, you took the big decision to make a change. How difficult a call was that to make with the legacy that Stuart has had at the club? Yeah, that's still, you know, a lot of soul searching for me because we, you know, after 25 years, we created what we thought was the dream team with the soul of the club uh, in, in good hands of people that had been here and understood us. Um, but for whatever reason, it wasn't working. And uh, still not sure why that was, but, but it didn't work. And, you know, the first call, I didn't go to the game yesterday. Uh, and I'm afraid my television didn't work either. So uh, I had to listen to on the beep. Uh, but you know, my first call after it was to Stuart Kettlewell because Stuart was part of the journey and it wasn't a journey that was a one-year journey. It was a 10-year journey and he gave his soul and everything to this club and it didn't work. And uh, football's a very strange, it's, it's, it's very different than every other business. But the successful teams know who they are. Whether you're Man City or Liverpool or, or, or Chelsea, the identity of that club is very clear, and, and, I, and I do feel from my position that, you know, t nine out of ten years in this league, we need to, you know, uncover our identity again, and to make sure that for the next ten years, that that direction is very clear and mapped out well. John Hughes is somebody that's raised eyebrows throughout his entire career. <laughs> there was probably 
surprise when um, he was appointed here. What were the characteristics? You've been proven right on that, but what were the characteristics that you saw in him that would be enough to get you off the bottom of the table and, and eventually finish 10th? I think uh, what I got was what I thought I would get. Um, I think we were, we were low. It wasn't about the technical nature of the football. It was about people. Like all successful things, they're about people. And, and how could we galvanise what we got? And uh, we had a few bumps along the way. We had a few good results that showed there was character uh, there. But could we actually get it out consistently? With, I think we had lost more goals than anyone in the league. What was, what was wrong? What was its style? Were we too expansive? Um, but certainly in the last three days, uh, you could see that that unity uh, was clear and uh, it doesn't happen overnight. He had a challenging job to come in and pick up a coaching team that he didn't know. Um, he had, you know, I didn't see John very often with COVID. It was the phone and I, and I didn't particularly like that, uh, that style of trying to manage for someone you don't really know. Um, but his enthusiasm uh, rubs off on everyone and, you know, whatever happened uh, at Wraith Rovers, he lost um, his love for football and, and uh, was aware that, uh, you know, that was still burning, that had come back and, and if we could get some of that gold dust sprinkled on the club, there was a chance that, you know, he could pick the players up and, you know, um, he's got an infectious personality and we needed that infectious personality at that point in time. Were there any stages of the season where you had any doubts and thought that you would be planning for a championship season? Yes, of course, uh, because that inconsistency never gave you any security that even after a win, and, and, and during the season, you know, we beat Celtic twice, you know, so you would think that you would, you know, there was something there, you know, there was, there was spirit, you know, there was, there was an underdog sort of mentality that you could beat that, but could you beat your fellow peers that were about you? And, and, and we had a spell that that wasn't happening, particularly at home. You guys were here, so, you know, you, you saw that um, live. <laughs> Uh, so that sort of inconsistency was about uh, people rather than technical. Uh, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm not sh sure that the technical was 100%, but it was about people. It was about who you are. Can you stand in front of the mirror and get a reflection of Ross County? And, and, and until probably that last three games, I didn't see it. I saw it in the last three games very clearly. And that sort of picture of, you know, the player, but, but the, the colours of Ross County behind there came through very clearly in that last three games. It's an old business adage that if you stand still, you're going backwards. Yeah. So what does the future hold? I think the future is we need to take a real stock. Alec Ferguson always said, you know, a team lasts four years, one year for building it, two years for competing it, three years, a four, fourth year for dismantling it. I'm not saying we're going to dismantle what we've got, but, but we need to really, we're not, we weren't in the position of 10th for no reason. We've got hearts coming back into the league that makes the league stronger. Um, so, you know, we are uh, a bottom six team. How do we become seventh? And that will be the challenge that we need to talk about and it, and it will be some in-depth talks and in-depth examination and, and, it, and it, it will be about football but it will also be about who Ross, what Ross County is, what does it stand for, what does it represent, what does it represent for its fans and I'm sure the fans after sitting out for a year are, are, are actually going to be hungry for actually being able to come back and see their team. It, Life has changed in a year. We have gone through an industrial revolution. Um, I'm not sure if people realise what has happened, but 
life is not going to be the same again. You know, we've, we're going to have home working, we're going to have, you know, online trading, um, we're going to have a cultural revolution in, in, in how we view our environment and climate change. And football's in amongst that. And, you know, we do need to, we, we do need to take stock and particularly um, that relationship with the fan needs to become stronger. We, we saw in the Super League uh, challenge that was there that the fan was forgotten. And I think all of us, you know, saw the uprising uh, of everyone that, you know, these, this is traditional. This is working class people that stand out there on the terraces and you forget them at your peril. And, and we have a really good relationship for our fans, but we need, to, we need to engage again. And we need to engage with our communities and our youth. You know, I, you know we, we, we will have people from our youth academy, and I know this, that have gone on away and done other things and, and don't want to come back to football. You know, they've gone on mountain bike or they've gone and done something else for a year. We've got a community that has not been able to have outdoor pursuits. And I think we'll need to redouble our efforts to connect with them. And I think there'll be people that feel that coming back into close proximity with people will be challenging. So I think football needs to, you know, it needs to learn uh, from these things and it's not immune to what goes on in our environment. Um, so I'm looking forward with, you know, a great challenge. It's going to be, you know, the, the old firm thing has, been re reignited and is going to give most other teams a challenge there. We've got the uh, hearts coming back. Uh, we've got less community clubs that puts more pressure on ourselves. And we really need to, to make sure that we understand clearly uh, where we are and, and, and where we need to go. And just finally, and it might be obvious because it's fresh in the mind, but what's the highlight of your season? Um, I think probably, you know, Celtic in the cap was a, was a highlight in that, you know, you need to do something different when you play the old firm, when you play them in the cap, when Celtic were in such a good run and we were on basement staff and we found a bit of that imagery of what Ross County was in that game. We, we, we weren't able to carry it forward into the league, but just been able to compete at that level because, you know, during the year we took certainly a 4-0 or a 5-0 defeat out of the old firm. So to be able to go and compete in the cap and to compete with them on the field uh, is, is, uh, it says that we have something, but we need to produce it every week. So I suppose that was on the journey, uh, probably one of the only highlights of uh, a challenging season. Well, fantastic. Thank you very much for your time, Roy. And once we got into the split, when you're up against your direct rivals, that's when we saw the real Ross County this season, wasn't it? Well, a lot of people don't like the split. And I think this season summed it up why it's vitally important that the teams who are in trouble and searching for consistency and uh, searching for results, play each other. Because you almost cut each other's throat. And when you wanted your players to step up, you wanted some consistency in your performances. You know, we spoke continually throughout the season that the only time they won back-to-back -back league games was the first two games of the season. And we kept wondering when they would do it again, if they would do it again. So to finish the season with three wins on the spin tells you everything about the players. You know, we spoke earlier about, you know, doing it one-off games but being able to back it up and do it again and do it when you're not playing well. Too often this season, County have played well and didn't win. But then when they didn't play well, they still didn't win. So they found a way to win games even when they weren't playing well. You know, I said earlier, I think relief in the end and I think deservedly stayed in the top flight. Jordan White came really big, yeah. didn't he? He did. And, you know, you look at him, first of all, physically, he's such an imposing guy. But having watched him in his opening four or five games for Ross County, I, I thought to myself... He's too nice. He just wants to stand alongside central defenders. He wants to jump 50-50 and challenge for the ball. If they kick him, he falls over. 
I'm thinking there has to be more to come from him. And he had some good moments in game. You know, of course, his goal against Celtic here to win the game 1-0 was terrific. His goal down at Hamilton was great. I think he was a great foil for Billy McKay when Billy had his little purple patch. But the game up at Tannadice, after the split when, when County won comfortably 2-0, I thought, that's the performance I've been waiting for. Physically went against Ram Edwards, physically went against Mark Reynolds. He took the ball in. He played as a lone striker and he had to take responsibility on himself to run the front line himself. And sometimes that's when you know about someone and you learn about them. And I just thought that day, I thought, at last, his top performance has landed. He now has to back that up. He did here against Hamilton and he did against Motherwell in the last weekend of the season. That almost encapsulates the team as a whole. I'm sure John would have loved to have had more comfortable 2-0 wins like at Dundee United. But when you really define your character is when you go behind. In the last two games, Hamilton and Motherwell, they went behind and they dug it out. They did. And that's, it's funny, I always hear people saying when you go behind, you know, that's when you build your character, you build character. I think it actually, that unveils your character when you're under pressure, when you're down. It brings out who you really are as an individual and who you really are as a team. So if there was any doubts or any concerns, which there was throughout the season, about could the players bounce back, could they suffer adversity and then show something different. And in those two games, they really did. It showed what it meant. And, you know, more so than the last weekend, or, sorry, the last game of the season when, when the captain stepped forward. You know, why is you know, he in the edge of the 18-yard box off Motherwell? I have no idea, but he's there and he scores a wonderful goal. Michael Gardine, you know, the most decorated player here, goals, appearances, everything. It was just so fitting that those two guys stood up because against Motherwell, they were really struggling under the cosh, lacked a little bit of life, lacked a little bit, a bit of spark and inspiration. And those two guys brought it to the fore, two guys with a rich history at the football club. So it was a dream ending. You know, it was a great start beating Motherwell, a great start finishing with a win against Motherwell, but the bit in between, I think there's a bit of work to do. Mr. Partick Thistle, Mr. Motherwell, is there a place in your heart after this season for Ross? Do you know what? There absolutely is. You've just said that to me and I've just got a shiver because I didn't know an awful lot about the club before it came up. I knew about the people who worked here, but to see and, and to feel the warmth that people have brought towards us, everyone included with RCFC TV, and to see the passion and the pride of the players and the passion and the pride of the backroom staff and the management and the owner, it's absolutely terrific. It's a club sometimes that gets forgot about, but I think now is the time to get the culture right, get everything right and make great strides going forward. Well, and I think we all echo those sentiments. Thank you very much to Stephen for all your efforts throughout this season. Also to Jamie Lyle for his excellent reporting and commentary and presenting throughout the entire campaign. It has been a thriller. We've got there in the end. Hopefully next season there will be all you lot, the supporters, back in here at the Global Energy Stadium. But thanks for watching throughout the entire season on RCFC TV and we will leave the final message with the players. This has been a season, life no order. No fans, little atmosphere, but the same passion. Stadiums have been different. Games have been different. But you have still been with us, week in, week out. There's been challenges. There have been highs. There has been lows. But we won the battle. But there's one thing that's always remained, and that has been you. Ross County has a history. We have a story. And a journey. And we always write it together. From our historic win at Celtic Park. To our big wins here in Dingwood. We've achieved this with you behind us. Players come and go. Seasons will pass us by. But you are our constant. So thank you for not just being fans but for being everything this club could possibly ask for and more. We are Ross County.